Hello Gunpla fans, this is DZ Maven here. And I'm here to do another review here. Continuing on with uh, the transformation kit theme of May here. I have the RE100 Bow here. Uh, this is the only transformable kit in the RE100 line. It's also the latest RE100 as well. Came out not too long ago. Uh, I picked it up here, so let's take a look at it here. So. Here it is right here. Anyway, this is uh, Gloomy Toto's mobile suit that he used for the majority of Gundam ZZ. And this was an experimental suit that was kind of somewhat based off of the Zeta Gundam. You can, the story behind it is that many of the engineers who designed the Zeta Gundam at Anaheim Electronics um, went over to Neo Zeon and they kind of cobbled together this um, Zeta-like mobile suit for Neo Zeon and it's the bow and the little uh, kanji insignia which is you just a little tip here this little kanji thing on the left skirt armor actually reads bow it's bow and out bow and o I believe it means uh, fierce dragon or something like that like I don't really have it in front of me right now at the moment but Anyway, that's uh, that's kind of the origin of the name behind it here. But anyway, getting on to details here, moving right along here. Um, this is actually pretty good looking straight out of the box here for me. Um, if, you're, if you are familiar with RE100 kits here, they're usually known for lots of detail. Uh, looking really good, look, looking like a master grade almost right out of the box here. They just kind of lack the internal frame and some of the finer points of articulation that a master grade would have and that still holds true with this kit here um, but it's actually surprisingly more articulate I believe than the other RE100 kits I've built here I've only built like two others before here um, but I mean sticking with the uh, details here overall it looks pretty darn good out of the box like I mentioned here there's lots and lots of panel lining all over this kit here and that really helps break up the sort of the very monotonous orange color that is throughout the kit here. Um, if you do get the kit, I very strongly suggest panel lining this thing. It'll just make it look like a like a, a thousand times better here. Um, you do get um, you get some areas of yellow. This is a very nice looking yellow that's on this kit here. It's it's not really a bright yellow. I kind of want to describe it more as a goldenrod type of yellow here and it looks really nice here. Now there are some spots that are not actually colored in that probably should be. I did try to paint in this yellow pieces on the ends of the skirt armor here because that's the way it is in the line art here. Um, I don't really have a good yellow paint on hand so I didn't really do all of the spots that need painting. Um, I do know you need orange around the thruster, yellow thrusters on here and they're supposed to be yellow on the inside of these vents down here. Um, you need some kind of brown color around the beam spray guns or that are on the shield here. In addition, they're supposed to be yellow inside the vents on the arms here, with those little vents being black here. But the, I actually I find that the, probably the weirdest thing here, because I think Bandai probably could have molded that in with the yellow piece that's in there, but they didn't. And also this little wire on the gun is supposed to be orange red as well, but I just painted that red here, so it kind of matched up here. But I mean, it's not that bad straight out of the box here. I mean, if you didn't know about that, you probably wouldn't really, wouldn't really care about those things here, but. But otherwise, I think this thing looks great out of the box here, and you do get a little sticker for the mono eye, which is really, really hard to see, but it's in there. But but other than that, I mean, it looks great. So it gets a 9 out of 10 from me on appearances. Um, so moving on to articulation here. Now, this is kind of the surprising part for me on this kit here, is I this thing is actually is a bit more articulate than I actually expected it to be here. And I'll see if I can show you all, demonstrate that for you here. Uh, let me take the shield off here because that'll make things a little easier for me here. So I'm kind of going to hold it carefully here for you. Bring my light up here. So starting with the head up here, as you can see, there's the mono eye. You can kind of see it right there. It's just a sticker. There's no clear piece for that, but the head can move around like so. Not really up and down too much here because you've got this big yellow piece here. It kind of gets in the way right there here. Some people say these little collar pieces tend to come off. They are a little bit loose, but you could just glue those down. I haven't had those fall off on me yet. Arm, you can move around. Um, the bend is not a 90 degree. It's only a single joint in there. So, But you, there is an additional joint kind of up in the wrist here. You can see that. 
it kind of it, it's interesting but there's not not really a whole lot you can do with it it's really more for the transformation um, arm can bend around like that and go up and down uh, and the elbow here not really too much of a cavicle joint here you can move around a little bit like that lift up about that far so not really too much in the arms that would be beyond a high grade I would say uh, but moving on down here, here's actually the surprising part here. For a transformable kit that's not a master grade, you probably would not expect it to have any sort of waist articulation in it, but it actually does. Let's see if I can do this. It's kind of hard to grab hold of this here, but it will bend back and forth like that. And it will tilt side to side as well. Pretty neat. Um, I honestly did not expect that out of a RE100 kit. Especially one that is transformable. Uh, these side screws, they just kind of, they're just wings. They just kind of flip up and out of the way here. Side screws, they come as one piece here, but you can split them in the middle here so they can move independently. About that far here. Uh, there is this little piece here that comes off. Um, not entirely certain what purpose this serves, but, I mean, you think it's for transformation, but I never had to move that for transformation, so I, it doesn't really serve any purpose for me. Moving on down to the legs here, to get the skirt armor out of the way here, the leg can bend pretty decently, like so here, like that. And if you lift this wing up, it will actually do the splits for you pretty well. And moving on down to the foot here, uh, there is some movement range in the foot here. The joint is actually up in here for the foot here. And that's because of the transformation here. Uh, the back foot piece will move around like so here. And it's coming a little loose on me, but kind of keep it on there. there. But uh, you can get some angles out of this here. It won't really go back and forth too much here. But that's just because of the way it is. But, you know, it's, it's not that bad here. Moving on the back here, you got these wings. They can kind of flip up like that. And they can move around a little bit. I can feel he's starting to come apart a little bit on me here. Let me squeeze them back together here and backpack will move around in these thruster pieces they can move it the joints pretty tight on them though but yeah articulation is not really it's actually kind of better than I expected it to be here uh, the other RE100 kits I built are pretty almost like bricks almost uh, the arms are okay but usually their lower half is pretty much a brick uh, not really the case on this guy he actually can move around pretty well here pretty comparable to a more advanced high grade kit I would say uh, so it gets an 8 out of 10 for me on articulation here, so not bad for this kit, actually, surprisingly. Uh, so moving on next to the extras. Obviously, the first thing we have is the beam rifle here. Since he's holding it right now, I'll just bring it up close here. There, is, is there, um, blah. there isn't much to the beam rifle here. It's just a couple pieces of plastic slapped together here. Uh, I don't know if you can see right there, there is kind of a seam on the end of the barrel you're going to have to deal with if you want, if you want to paint it. Um, the scope is a separate piece here, but the wire on it is gray, so you would have to paint that. And you do get a red plastic piece with those two cables right there, but there's a couple of moving parts on it. The handle can flip away if you need to, and there is a little piece up here that flips out. That's for attaching it into the bow attacker mode. Now also on this kit here, you do have a, there are some grenade launchers in the forearms right there. Hatch flips open pretty nicely here, and the beam sabers are fell out. And the beam saber is in the forearm right there, as you can see there. You do get some yellow beam blades. You, if you want, you can stick it in the um, in the forearm like that. If you want to have it like almost like the way the Sananju or the Sasabi can fire beams out of the forearm, or you can just pull it off and have it like a regular beam saber, like so. And it just pegs right into the hand, not really much to it. And that we do got the shield here. It's a very nice looking shield. It's a kind of a dark, warm brown color, different from the rest of the kit here. You do get a red piece for these uh, beam spray guns, which are kind of mounted in the shield here. Uh, it's pretty nice, it kind of pops out the front here. These three in the front look really nice. The two on the sides uh, look like crap, to be honest. They, I really think Bandai could have made these a separate piece with uh, better molding that matched these ones. 
I think they would have looked, looked a lot better because these are kind of flat and there's no real um, it, there's no real line in here for you to do any panel lining because it's really soft so it's kind of a pain in the butt uh, we do get a nice little yellow piece for the Neo Zeon insignia on the shield and it's just a basic uh, clip on connector on the back here so there's not really much to it <clears throat> and it only clips onto the back side of the arm which is okay but it makes for posing kind of problematic I'd say doesn't really pose that well when the shield is only mounted on the back of the arm uh, and beyond that we do have these missile packs here which go on the wings they just clip on the back of the wings kind of like so right here and they don't really like to stay on they like to, they fall off a lot so I usually don't have them on the kit um, I might I only have them on the kit when if I have the bow attacker transformed but that's kind of the only reason here otherwise these are really loose and they fall off a lot so yeah and beyond that you do get two action base connectors two unique ones uh, this is the one you'll probably use most of the time this one here this connects into the underside crotch of the mobile suit and will attach to the beam rifle when these when you have the bow attacker transformed this other one here is specifically for the bow nutter it connects kind of right onto the crotch piece right there and holds it up on the action base just fine now the stickers that come with this kit is just the regular sticker decals you usually see with most kits here uh, for the most part they're pretty much okay here this one for the insignia on the skirt armor is really big probably would have been better as a dry transfer or a water slide decal in my opinion here but that's kind of just the way it is here they're not bad, they look okay here, so. So moving on from that here, um, I'll talk a little bit about the bow attacker and the bow nutter here. Uh, transformation for this, for the uh, bow attacker is not really as hard, but it is the more complicated transformations here. Uh, basically, the the top just sort of unhooks itself from the, the little core head region of the bow nutter here and just kind of lifts off and the chest kind of splits apart at the back and it is kind of then you kind of fold the arms down the um, shoulder armor wraps around the arms and then it's kind of flipped underneath the kit here the wing wings will extend out the back of the kit here and they'll and the, and the wings will straighten out and everything and then you kind of slip, stick the shield on the back and stick the beam rifle underneath it and the head section kind of dips down inside of the torso of the kit here so it's actually fairly complicated for a kit that is not a master grade but it actually pulls it off without any part swapping the only things you have to remove are the hands, and it's pretty neat here because with the hands, they you pull them off, and then the piece where the hands are just kind of flips around to basically have a kind of a blank gray vent, which is kind of nice looking. So that way, you really don't have to do any part swapping on this kit to transform, which is really surprising for a kit that, again, that is not a master grade kit. Uh, the bow nutter is really, really easy to do. You just turn the legs around and flip the those side skirt wings up and the uh, the front side skirts kind of lock down to little pins pin spots that are on the upper legs that kind of keeps them in place and the feet just the back of the feet tuck in and then they tuck up inside of the leg here re really nicely here so again it, it's really simple and again there's no no part swapping involved or anything here so there really isn't much to say about the battle nutter it's just it's just the flying legs is what it is <laughs> But, but yeah, transformation is not really that bad on this kit here. Um, if you do mess around with it a lot, it will loosen up and be a little janky, I think. But especially with the top half. But I mean, if you're just mindful about things, I don't think you really have much of an issue with this kit here. It's definitely not a hard transformation to me. So, um, so at the end of this, uh, extras get a seven out of ten for me. So pretty decent extras. I mean, they could use some better detail, like on the shield, like I said, and the rifle and. These little missile pods probably could be attached a little better to the kit here, but it's not it's not bad. It's pretty bit average to me, extras. Uh, moving on to value of this guy here. Uh, this kit came out in November of 2016, which was just last year, just at the end of last year here. Um, he retails for 3,500 yen, which is about 31 dollars in today's exchange rates. Um, compared to Really, the only other kit I know of is the High Grade Universal Century Bow, which came out in September of 2000. So it is a very old kit. 
Uh, from the pictures I've looked at, the proportions of the kit are different from the RE100, and I think going back and looking looking at those after building this kit here, um, I definitely like the look of the RE100, obviously, a lot better than the High Grade Universal Century kit. High grade, the High Grade Universal Century looks like it has some very weird proportions with the torso and the shoulders on it, so definitely, I definitely would go with this here. Um, the high grade is only 1200 yen, but compared to the amount of work you'd have to put into it to make it look right, it's probably, you might as well just get the R100 now. Um, so this gets a value of 9 for me. Um, pretty good buy, I would say. If you see it and you like it, definitely pick it up. You will probably be happy with it here. Like I said, it, it only requires a little bit of minor detail painting on it, so it's not really a whole lot. But even if you don't do that, it looks it still looks good out of the box here. So at the end of this, the RE100 bow gets a 33 out of 40 from me, making this still a pretty good kit here. Uh, definitely worth your money if you decide to pick it up here. You'll, you'll probably be pleased with it here. I mean, I was. I mean, I was surprised at how good this was compared to the other RE100 kits I built. And after this, I know it's the Hamahama, and hopefully that will turn out to be excellent as well here. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the review here. Uh, give me a like if you like the review, and if you have any questions about anything, you can leave a comment below. And be sure to subscribe because there is more transforming kits coming this month here. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see y'all next time.